before we get into this absolutely fire video, just want to say, please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button down below. Also, do not forget to leave a comment for who you guys want to see in episode two. That being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of In the Film Room. We got our very first special guest. You guys have been asking for guests on the channel for literally months on end now. So we got very first guest here. We got TJ's finest hometown hero, Chase Winovich, former New England Patriot, current Cleveland Brown. Chase Winovich, uh, star DN outside linebacker. So how you doing, Chase? Doing great. Thank you for having me on, Dom. That's, I appreciate you coming on the channel. Uh, you know, time's the most valuable thing you could give somebody. And, you know, I'm just very grateful to, uh, you know, spend a few minutes with us. So thank you again. Super grateful to be on here, man. Looking so, forward to, uh, to breaking down this film. Yes, sir. So we're a uh, new series, like I said. We're bringing NFL players on. Whoever you guys want, really, you know, anybody can come on here, but uh, Chase is the first one. Very grateful to have him here. And uh, I got about five questions for Chase, you know, pertaining to, to football. And then um, we're going to tie us back in the movie reviews because this is a movie review channel. And uh, Chase got to pick the movie. And the guest always gets to pick the movie. And uh, Chase picked Braveheart, which I actually never saw until he recommended it. Not going to give anything away. But, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So my first question for you, Chase, is, uh, like, what was like your first surreal moment like you had in the NFL? Because like going to the Patriots, like round three, 77th overall, like I couldn't imagine like my first day at work, at work, you know, that'd be awesome playing in the NFL. But first day at work going in and being like, holy cow, that's Tom Brady. Like, that's Tom Brady. That's my teammate now. So I don't know. So what like, would you say is your first like, holy cow, this is the NFL? Well, off the field, it was probably the day after I got drafted. So obviously we were, we were hanging out. My whole family was over celebrating me getting drafted and then the next morning you know the Patriots had called me the previous night and said hey we booked your flight I think it was at like six or six in the morning something like super early so needless to say I didn't get much sleep that night <laughs> and flew all the way to Boston and then obviously south to Foxborough where the Patriots play and I got to meet like everybody in the building uh, there wasn't any players at the time but I got to meet coach Belichick and it was a pretty, uh, pretty crazy experience to go from having no real direction to all of a sudden now, hey, I'm actually on an NFL team. This is real. And let's do this. That's awesome. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a dream come true to play in the NFL. I mean, I remember seeing you uh, walk through the hallways, like for the huddle thing. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I was like a few weeks before the draft and you took the time out of your day. You talked to me for a few minutes and, you know, I ne like, I never forgot. I never forgot about that. I mean, my sister was telling me today, I was like, recording a video with Chase and she's like yeah Chase talked to me the one day up at the track and she's like you know kindness you know how you treat people they never forget it so you know thank you you know just thank you, uh, you know? that's that's pretty cool yeah yeah I'm happy you remembered that I mean it is what it is but no you, you're pretty cool yourself so thank you. um, I appreciate it goes both ways but and then uh my next question would be um what would you say the biggest difference is going from the NFL go from the college to NFL I mean you got you played a pretty pretty uh run heavy physical cont uh, contact conference being in the big 10 since you played your ball at michigan so what would you say the biggest um difference or like the hardest thing is to go from the big 10 to the nfl i'd say the biggest thing for me is the level of individual competition from person to person in terms of like it's the smallest things that ultimately lead to the biggest difference the season is a lot longer that's another thing but as I was saying previously, it's like, if you think about it, it's like, if you're competing at the pinnacle of anything and the NFL certainly is, whether it's coaches, whether it's like the chefs, whether it's the players themselves, it's like every person there is at the 99th percentile of what they do. And it's like, every single person is like matched up against the, the opposing like 99th percentile of their position respectively. And so if you think about it, it's like you have people uh, that are masters at their craft, but it's like the way to get better and the way to do it consistently is like you got to master all these other things as well. And uh, those little nitty gritty details in terms of your process um, as it are something that I, I think I've been harnessing and, and uh, crafting for the past couple of years. And I hope to put those on full display this year. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, Literally, like the day before you got traded, uh, my friend had just bought your jersey off, uh, off um, oh. like NFL.com. 
And uh, he texts uh, me the next morning. I think they like, have assurances on that, though, right? They, well, I, they I mean, have, he's, like, I mean, we're all, you know, we're all huge fans of you. I mean, you're the hometown hero and everything. We're watching you since, like, you know, freshman year. That's, ball that out stinks. Up there. That so, stinks. Uh, no, he, I mean, he collects jerseys anyway. So, I mean, what's one more to the collection, you know? Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, so, uh, my third question would be, you know, you play, um, like, since you were in the A, since, well, no, you're still in the AFC, but uh, you played in a really good division uh, with the Patriots. So, and you played some really good offensive linemen. So who would you say is probably the best offensive lineman or just player in general, like you've had to like actually compete against like straight up in a rep uh, so far in the NFL? Um, I, I've gone against several very talented offensive tackles where I'm like, this guy has answers for everything. It's like, you know, it's like you can't beat him with, uh, with speed. You can't beat him with counter. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to beat him with power. And um, it's like, you eventually figure it out as the game goes on, especially. But I'd say one of the best players that I've personally played against in terms of just like overall well-roundedness was Joe Tooney, who currently is a guard for the Chiefs. Um, this is more of a practice thing. I mean, most tackles I, I, I like my chances with playing football, but uh, as a guard um, coming inside, he was – he has great balance. He's strong. He's smart. He has a lot of the attributes that I, I think uh, allow people to consistently perform well. And he's sneakily very, very athletic. So, yeah, Joe Tooney is probably one of the, the better players I've played against. But, yeah, everybody – I mean, you get to this level, it's like – Everybody's you know, good. Everybody's good. Exactly. Yeah. No, he's, he's definitely a really good player. I watched a lot of film on him. And, uh, you know, that's, that's cool because I've asked, like, offensive linemen that before. And, um, you know, the, the, the most common answer I get is Aaron Donald. So it's kind of cool to ask you because you play defensive line. So, you know, you know, you're not going against Aaron Donald. So it's interesting to get another perspective on it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, Joe, Tuna, that's really cool. Uh, he's, a, he's definitely a really good player. And, uh, you know, that's, very, that's a very interesting take going because usually you play D end and outside backer. So talking like uh, like in, into your offensive line, that's a very interesting answer. But uh, yeah, so. For another question, what would you what would you say like what aspect are you like do you want to work on most this off season? Like what aspect of your game do you want to improve on most going into you know your first season with the Browns? Like I said, I think it's the little things that ultimately will make the biggest difference in terms of my game. I led the Patriots in sacks my first two years. I led. I'm pretty sure that I mean the, the Browns just shared a stat. I don't know whether it's true or not. Not a statistician, but they shared it. So who knows? This is on them, I guess. If it's not true, but said that I led the entire country my second year in the NFL in pressures. Um, so it's like the pieces are, are, are there. It's like, how do I take it from what I've been working on and what I've been doing? And how do I take it to the next level? And I think one of those things is um, finding a way to make sure my weight doesn't fall out, fall throughout the season. So that includes like keeping my muscle and, and keeping my, my weight on. Um, so that, you know, it's the long run of the season, not necessarily a sprint. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. Um, and then ultimately just adding some new pass rush moves into my repertoire. And that includes the details of those rushes as well, making sure, you know, my legs are strong enough to support me in different positions, making sure that my footwork is good enough so that whenever I come, I, you know, fake out a defender uh, I try to get him moving into a certain direction that it's like right. stability wise I you know a I'm, I'm quick enough to do it but b it's like I can keep my balance throughout that process as well so there's certainly a couple things that I am addressing head on and I'm working on um, amongst those are my weight my balance and my strength yeah definitely yeah that's that's really cool because I mean playing playing offensive line you you know you kind of work like the similar things because you're basically you know we're basically doing whatever everything you guys do just backwards so you know exactly so uh that's definitely really interesting i meant to touch on this earlier um but uh i was going through your like stats literally today and i went up and i was talking to my mom i'm like mom chase is 2020 was absolutely insane like you were like one of if not like the best like edge like dn outside linebacker like the whole year like you were absolutely like your stats were absolutely crazy and then i was looking back at you through michigan and I saw you were the like the team MVP your senior year. You were two time All Big Ten, two time All Academic Big Ten, two time All American, twenty six starts, forty five career games, one hundred eighty five career tackles. I mean, forty five TFLs, eighteen sacks. I mean, like, you know, for people that don't know who you are, because you know, um, 
you know, I go to school down in Louisiana. So, you know, people down there, they think the ball is kind of softer up north. But I mean, Chase, you're a dude. You're you're a dude, man. You know, you get out, you get after everybody. And, uh, you know, you're a hell of a player. And I want to touch on your stats earlier because, I mean, they're just – I didn't even realize how amazing they are. And, I mean, I've literally followed you since I was, like, 12. So, yeah, I mean, I, those are just jaw-dropping numbers. And I'm really excited to see what you do with the Browns. I think, you know, you guys have some really good defensive defensive ends, some really good uh, linemen up there, some really good offensive linemen to go against in practice. And, uh, you know, just – you know, just uh, chill a little bit when you play the Steelers. You know, you know how it goes. You know, Pittsburgh guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, my last question would be, you know, obviously the Browns uh, acquired you via trade. So, um, what? So, what would you say that the uh, the organization and the the Cleveland Brown fan base should uh, should expect from you this coming season? So I said the same thing last time the Browns asked me this. And honestly, it's like, I think that uh, there's something to be said for under promising and over delivering. And ultimately um, everything that I want to be said about me and about what I've been, I've been doing and working on and the, the work that I've been putting in, I want it to be deduced from my on-field performance and that's as simple as, you know, the best way I could put it. It's like my work will, will be the ultimate uh, judge of, of speak for what itself. everything I've been doing. Exactly. It'll speak for itself. So, all set. Thank you, Dominic. It's all good. You know, I, I feel the same way, you know, just go out there, you know, just do your best. And, uh, you know, if you put the work in, good things happen in the end, you know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Either it's written, as I believe it is, and I will step into this role with, confidence and I will do what needs to be done or it's not and uh, either way you know it's like I mean there's a certain level of things that are kind of out of my control but what's in my control is working as hard as I can every day and that includes you know being in my playbook watching film and just being there for my teammates and, and obviously like working hard which uh, I mean I've always proud of myself on working hard we're jaguars so yeah. you get it yeah four corners and uh all those gas and uh gassers and half gassers you know no one else is doing exactly it like, uh, and this and those cycles yeah the old school way yeah thing. yeah that's no one no one works you like coach turpak does i'll tell you that no but, way um, no but i mean i love the way you play you know no quit endless motor i mean you give 100 percent every play i see you chasing the ball down i mean you're definitely someone, you know, young guys should be modeling their game after on the, you know, on the D line and just like overall teammate. I mean, you're very active in the community. I saw you just uh, were at an event for a stadium in uh, Cleveland High School Stadium. And, you know, it's just, you know, you're a, you're a great football player and you're an even better person. So, you know, Thanks, I, just, Dominic. I you appreciate know. that, bro. This is a hype up session. Let's go. You the man. <laughs> no, I mean, I've been a big fan of you for a while. I mean, you know, you're the home, you're the hometown hero, you know. <laughs> you know, I remember you now, played. Hey, now I'm the other hometown enemy, bro, for the Browns. You know, yeah, I mean, you know how it is. You know, Jaguars we're, for life. We, we, we are TJ. Script real quick. Yeah, we are TJ. <laughs> That's true. That's well, true. I mean, when, That's you know, true. when the schedule comes out uh, Thursday night, and you know, I'll see what days I can't be a Chase uh, Chase Winovich fan. Uh, what two? Oh, what two? Okay. What two okay. weekend? Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all the questions I got. So, uh, you ready to jump in the Braveheart? I'm ready. So, is there any specific reason why you why you chose Braveheart? It's probably the movie that I've seen the most. Really? I think that there's a lot of genius in the movie itself. I mean, I've had theories about it. I don't, I don't know um, which, like what exact evidence I have to substantiate those claims, but it's like, the, excuse me, the movie itself is, uh, is really quite genius. I'm pretty sure there's like an Australian director. I mean, we could look this up, but it's like, there's like an Australian director uh, or actually, no, Australian producer. It's directed by Mel Gibson, who's obviously an American. Um, and they're wearing kilts, which isn't even a historically accurate fact. Like, they didn't wear kilts back when the Braveheart era was. So it's like, there's a lot of things that's just like right off the bat. And it's just like, don't really make sense. Yeah. But when you watch it, there's a reason that it won Picture of the Year. It's like, one, it's beautiful. And the soundtrack is absolutely like incredible. It's like every, like the sound is like so perfectly matched to like all the scenes, whether it's like the song called Revenge, when he 
he's riding, he's like slow motion going into town and like everybody's watching him and it's just like filled with suspense. And it's like that sort of suspense, they somehow managed with like the visual side of things, with the music, um, or the score, uh, with the acting to maintain that suspense through like three hours. Like it's insane. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah. where can you go to get that? It's like every, every, moment of the film whatever it is that they're trying to send in terms of like the messaging whether they want you to be sad whether they want you to be angry like whatever like the characters are actually like experiencing like i personally and i think other people did too like felt that like that is that the power of art is to me is that you can like you can transcend these boundaries is that like you could you could like i don't know like read these words off a page and like it wouldn't have any of like the same impact as like when right. you put them all together in this way what are your thoughts on it you you seen the movie correct i did i actually i watched it like so when i when i texted you it was like a month ago and i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna watch this now just because i had nothing to do and uh so i was like because i'd never seen it before so that's actually really interesting because i didn't know that this is like the most like the, mo the main movie you've ever seen so this was the first time i've ever seen it so if you wouldn't have recommended it i probably would have never seen it and my one teammate is, uh, he's like, uh, he's Irish. So he like kind of walks around saying he's like a, a Celtic warrior or something. So, I mean, Brennan's a clown. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he watches these videos with Brennan, yeah, you're an absolute clown. But um, <laughs> no, this was the first time I've seen it. And I'm really happy you recommended it because I really love this movie. And uh, like everything you said, I mean, I thought the cinematography was absolutely terrific in this film. I mean, I don't think they filmed this. I know it takes place in Scotland, but I think they filmed it in Iceland if I... Uh, if I um, if I'm recalling correctly, but I mean the cinematography was absolutely insane. Like the, like the landscapes and the backdrops with them like riding the horses and like just traversing the land. I just thought the cinematography was absolutely on point. The music, I thought the music was awesome. Like you really feel like every like you like in the shots, you really can feel like the like the anger and like the violence. Like you really can feel like the sadness and all these emotions. So I just thought they did a really good job with the music and the score and everything. And I just thought the character development in this film was awesome. Like the characters that you're really supposed to pull for, like Mel Gibson's character, like you really pull for him. And the yeah, characters like yeah. you're not supposed to like, you're like, all right, I cannot stand this guy. So I just thought the character, I just thought they did a really solid character development. And what I've noticed most, like, cause I've, since I've started the YouTube channel, I've watched more and more movies, movies that tend to be over like two hours. They kind of get like drawn out or they have pacing issues. And that's just not the case here. I had like, there was no point during this movie that's like, okay, like I'm kind of bored or like, this is far fetched. Like I was completely engaged the whole time. And um, I just really thoroughly enjoyed this movie for all three hours. Like I was like three hours went by really fast. I thought Mel Gibson's performance was phenomenal. It was gripping. It was emotional. It was charismatic. You know, he's a guy like you can get behind. And it's like, I got done watching this movie. I'm like, damn, I'll go run through this wall for Mel Gibson right now. You're right. You're but, right. You're uh, really fired up. And I like I like the humor that was in this movie because it's a very serious movie, but it's not like serious all the time. And it's not like it's not kind of like stupid humor where it's like, oh, ha ha ha. It's like they implement it like perfectly. It's like right into the conversation. Like as a person, you would be like, OK, I could see myself making a joke here or there. Like I just thought the humor was really on point. I thought it was funny. The violence was absolutely insane. I mean, limbs are going like flying all over the screen. I mean, it's, I mean, the battles were just really satisfying to see. And I mean, we live in a day and age where everything's like CGI. So, I mean, just to see like a really practical, large scale, like battle, like it really felt like, you know, you really felt like this is like the battle for freedom, which it was for Scotland. So, I mean, I really loved this movie and um, I just thought that the, uh, that was done really well. And I just enjoyed all three hours of it. And uh I just really loved it. I don't know what else to say. Uh, is there anything you don't you don't like about this movie? I mean, the historical inaccuracies, that's like probably the, the most glaring one. But that's if it was meant to be that sort of like historical expose. And like that's what the weird part about art is that it's like symbolically like them wearing kilts. Like that's clearly like a Scottish identity, you know, inside people's minds, like they already like naturally associate that sort of thing. And so it's like by seeing it, it kind of like really helps like transport the person. So it's like, you know, how much of this is like artistic leeway versus um like their responsibility to make it like as historically as possible. And like there's like battles and stuff where it's like they didn't quite take place the the way that uh, yeah. it was portrayed in the film. But nonetheless, it's like it was uh, 
it definitely accomplished its mission if its mission was to make the most badass film of all time because that yeah. movie's sick yeah <laughs> I, I really like this movie i'd say the only thing i just liked was um i mean this is just being like really picky just from like an entertainment what do you, what, what an do you entertainment think? like standpoint but um I didn't really care for like the few exposition dumps that they do like here and there where like something will happen. And then we have to go here. Like somebody go tell it to another character. Oh, like this is what William Wallace just did. Like, and his army just did. And then you, you have to hear about literally what you just saw and then how they're going to like counter, like counter what just happened. And then you have to go see it. You know, like, I just didn't really care for the exposition dumps. And then I thought they did like the romance really well between William Wallace and uh, Murin. And then at the end, like when there's kind of like the like the relationship between William Wallace and Queen uh, Princess Isabella, I didn't really Queen Isabella. I didn't really care for that. I thought that was just kind of like shoehorned in at the end. So, I mean, that's just being picky, though. But uh, those You're are two things the romance, like how she got pregnant and stuff. Um, I mean, I just didn't really buy it because like it was so close towards the end of the movie and they didn't really develop it at all. That kind of was just like like it just kind of just happened so like yeah yeah you're right it was a probably a little thrown together yeah. um it's kind of interesting though because it's like 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 i said i think uh i'm taking put on my like english teacher hat where they're like oh like the author meant this you know it's like really are you sure about that what if the author like didn't mean that but yeah at the same time it's like you know if the movie is kind of like like a lot of great stories if it's not necessarily meant to be literal uh, which it's clearly not trying to be literal, like from like a historical standpoint. So maybe metaphorically, it's not trying to be literal either. And um, you see the part where he's like, you know, he's about to die and he's about to go through a great amount of pain. And it's like, you know, the, she tries to like dull his wits, essentially. It's like, as he puts it, like, I can't dull my wits, um, you know, by taking this like numbing agent, which it's like, if you had to like compare that to something that we experience in society today, it's like, it's kind of in the form of uh, what any number of like conscious altering substances that people consume, whether it's alcohol or marijuana or this or that. It's like, you know, it's ultimately it's like they don't really lead to like the, the betterment of you. It's like even though you have to go through a lot of pain, it's like pain is kind of a process of like the human existence. So it's like yeah. on a deeper level, I think there's like little references that if it's like you either get it or you don't. But it's right. like something about those sort of truths when they're portrayed in that way, like even if they aren't stated directly, resonate with something inside of individuals. Um, and that's what to me is like really interesting. There's also a lot of like really great quotes. Like, oh, yeah, uh, definitely. You know, really great quotes. The one where he's like uh, holding the sword and he's like, first, you have to learn to use this and then I'll teach you how to use this. Yeah. You know, I think that was I sick. I thought the the speech he gave before the one battle where uh, they're like, uh, William Wallace is, is seven feet tall. And uh, he's yes, like, I've heard. yeah, he, the speech. yeah, he can consume the enemy with yeah. Uh, yeah, fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his ass. And then yeah. everyone starts laughing. I thought that speech was absolutely phenomenal. Probably one of the best movie speeches I've ever seen. Definitely hands down one of the best I've seen in recent, recent uh, movie memory. But um, yeah, so it's fire. So now we're it's time for uh, for the ratings. So since this is a movie on streaming platforms, it's gonna be on the uh, the stream scale. So uh, what do you what's your uh, what's your rating of it? I'd say I mean I picked the movie, so you like, can give you it a ten. I mean? like, you can give it a ten. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say uh, I'd say uh, nine and a half. That's what nine I'm gonna go with the nine and a half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's it's hard it's hard to like stay that's a ten because everything then gets compared to that. It's like that right. is the perfect movie where it's like right. I, I think there are, there are things that could be better. I just think it's like, I mean, to me personally, yeah. I think uh, it's it's one of the best movies that I. I mean, I if it's your, I mean, if it's your favorite, like, you know, it's yeah, your opinion, exactly. It's opinion, you know? That's what I mean. Uh, that's my favorite. Yeah. No, I I really I really enjoyed this movie. I never seen it until you recommended it. So I mean, this was the first time I'd seen it. So I mean. Uh, that's probably why I'm a little bit higher on it than you are, but uh, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it 9.7 streams out of 10. I really 9.7. I, Let's I go. thoroughly wow. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, and uh, you know it's is three hours. It is a long watch, but it is worth every second. It's worth every second to me. But uh, question: What's the highest? What's the highest rated movie like that we've had on the streams? Oh, I gave I gave uh, uh, you know the movie Nobody. 
I with uh, Bob Odenkirk, and it's kind of like a Hitman movie. It's only like an hour and 30 minutes. Wow. And Nobody. I, gave, I gotta check it out. I gave, I gave that movie a 10 out of 10 because, like, to be honest, the action is absolutely crazy. It's in, it's over the top. It's insane. I mean, he hit somebody with a with a pole in his throat, and he, like, cuts, like, a little hole and then puts a straw in it so the guy can breathe. I mean, the soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal if you like old classical music and uh, yeah, it's like some, some 80 stuff. I mean, it's really fast-paced. It's in and out. It doesn't stay – like, it doesn't overstay, and I was just – you know, foot on the gas. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Bob Odenkirk, pretty sure he's in ba- uh, Breaking Bad, and he's in a he's a bunch of good stuff. Uh, so I thoroughly enjoy that. So I think right now it's currently the only streaming movie that's a, that's a ten out of ten. Okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. Respect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to nobody. But uh, it's telling me in the upper left hand corner we only got about a minute and three seconds left. So I'm uh so we're gonna uh, close this up right here. Like I said, just want to say uh, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Chase, for making time to come out on the channel. I feel bad because I said it's probably only be like 15 to uh, 20 minutes. And don't, I, don't feel bad at all, man. We're, we're, we're on here for 40 minutes. Yeah, chocolate, I appreciate, I appreciate it, it, Chase. I hope, I hope the people enjoy it. So Yes, sir. Appreciate I mean, you I, having me on, man. I appreciate we'll your have time. we to do it again sometime. Yes, I, anytime. I mean, you can, you can come on whenever. I mean, you know, cool. the more people, cool. the better. You know, I want to get as many people involved as possible. And, uh, you know, you're a great football player and you're an even better person. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to say you're a Jaguar you as well. You too, buddy. You so, too, uh, buddy. Let's go. I'm going to be tuning in. I'm going to yes, be watching, watching Thanks, you guys Chase. play this year. So. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks, Chase. Really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, see you next time you're on the show. You got it, buddy.